In this video, I'll explain an error I made in the Puma design, which I have since corrected, and I'll correct some demonstration errors in my earlier videos. I'll also explain how to deal in general with errors in the optical path lengths that may occur due to practical 3D printing issues, so you'll know how to get the best optical performance from your Puma microscope. While reviewing the Puma CAD models, I realized that the design I was using for all the ocular head configurations above the filter block caused the focal plane of the eyepiece to be placed one millimeter above where it optimally ought to be. Another way of saying this is that the optimal focus plane of the image from the objective is one millimeter below the ocular's focal plane. This is illustrated in the figure. You can still easily focus an image of the specimen onto this ocular focal plane by focusing the stage, but then the focused image will not be the best quality you can get from your objective. The effects of this will be a minor loss of planarity and chromatic correction in the focused image. There will also be some loss of par focality when changing objectives. In most practical cases, these effects will be very slight and probably not noticeable. Also, the 3D printing process itself may partially compensate for this error, as I'll explain later. However, for accurate scientific documentation, and to give you the knowledge you need to get the best optical performance from a Puma scope, I made this video to describe the error and to explain how I corrected it in the current Puma design. I'll also describe how you can correct for it if you have an older Puma scope, and fortunately it is very easy to correct. Note that this error only affected ocular attachments above the filter block. It did not affect the trinocular port. This 1mm undershoot error is due to the use of the C to RMS adapter in the quick release objective holder. In the early prototypes of Puma, I did not use a C mount thread in the quick release objective holder, but a direct 3D printed RMS thread and the quick-release objective holder is 10 mm high. The filter block attached to it, either the simple or the advanced filter block, adds a further 50 mm, so the total length from the flange of the objective to the top of the filter block was 60 mm in the original Puma prototypes prior to instigating the C to RMS adapter. I therefore designed all the ocular head options on the basis that there was a further 90 mm of optical path length left to fill before the focal plane of the ocular, which must occur at 150 mm from the flange of the objective for compliance with the RMS standards, as was described in the video on beam splitters and the advanced filter block. Unfortunately, when I added the C to RMS adapter to the design much later on, I did not compensate the ocular head's design for the extra 1mm this pushes the objective down by. By moving the flange of the objective 1mm lower, this means that the new optimum focus point is also 1mm lower, that is 89mm above the filter block and not 90mm as before. So, because all the other measurements for the ocular heads were unchanged, this meant that the designed position of the ocular focal plane was still at 90mm above the filter block that is now at 151 mm from the flange of the objective, and so is 1 mm above where it ought to be with the CRMS adapter in place. I redesigned the trinocular camera port system much later, and for that I did use the correct lengths taking this extra 1 mm of the C to RMS adapter into account. So, for the trinocular camera port, there is no 1 mm undershoot error that needs correcting. In fact, some of you who built a Puma system prior to the updated parts that correct for this may have noticed that you need a larger ocular cap gap in the trinocular eyepiece holder to make it par focal with the ocular head eyepieces. Well, now you know why. I corrected this problem by updating the design of just four parts to make them one millimeter shorter than before. This update was posted on GitHub on the 23rd of August 2022, so anyone printing a Puma microscope from models downloaded from the main GitHub branch after that date has nothing to do, because for you this design error doesn't exist. For anyone with an older Puma scope, it is very easy to compensate for this 1mm undershoot error without doing any extra printing. 
For any config that uses an eyepiece, simply use a default ocular cap gap, or OCG, of 1mm instead of the usual 2mm. That's it. All done. For any config using a direct C mount camera, use your camera's focus adjustment to bring the chip 1mm closer to the scope. If your camera doesn't have that ability, then you will need to print the updated C mount attachment described above. One other error I noticed while reviewing my videos, which is not a design error but simply a demonstration error in the video, is that at one point in the video on the trinocular camera port, I wrongly showed the assembly of the ocular module with two 15mm spacers. This is wrong. Only one spacer should be used, as is correctly shown elsewhere in that video and in other videos I made. While on the subject of the trinocular camera port, bear in mind that you still need to use the original thicker ocular cap spacer under the eyepiece. This spacer was previously available in the binocular FreeCAD file, but because I have now changed that to a thinner spacer, I have included the old thicker ocular cap spacer directly in the trinocular FreeCAD file on GitHub. This is not really an error, but a misleading demonstration regarding how to insert filters into the illuminated field diaphragm, or IFD, slot. While explaining how to fit the crosshairs IFD filter into its tray in the curler video, I said the part of the crosshairs filter which has the cavity must face outwards towards the lamp. This is actually correct, but only for the crosshairs filter. That's because the chamfered edge of the filter slider must face in towards the mirror block, and the crosshairs filter is made with this chamfer on the bottom of the filter, away from the cavity of the filter. If you're using a generic IAD condenser type filter slider in the IFD filter slot, bear in mind that those filter sliders are constructed the other way round, compared to the crosshairs filter. That is, with the filter cavity on the same side as the chamfer on the edge. So, for all IFD filters other than the all-in-one crosshairs filter, you must insert them with the filter cavity facing inwards towards the mirror block. One of the reasons the 1mm undershoot error got past me when I was making previous videos is that I checked my measurements by actually making physical measurements on the 3D printed scopes rather than relying on figures from the CAD files. I found that the actual measurements of the scopes conformed quite well to the 60mm, 90mm measurements I assumed were correct from my recollection of my earlier prototype designs. The reason for this discrepancy between the 3D print and the CAD file measurements is due to the fact that the optical tube of the scope up to the top of the filter block, especially with the advanced filter block, is made up of many 3D printed parts layered on top of each other. Each layer printed slightly shorter than the CAD measurement due to a small amount of elephant footing in my printing. This tiny amount of shortening, compounded over multiple parts, stumped to be approximately 1mm of shortening in total. So, a structure that on CAD was a height of 61mm in 3D printed practice turned out to be closer to 60mm. This illustrates an important general point. There will inevitably be variations in the microscope mechanical tube length due to the tolerances of 3D printing. For the best performance from your optics, you should make whatever adjustments are required to ensure that your eyepiece focal plane is as close as possible to 150mm from the flange of your objective. For any configuration using an eyepiece, this adjustment can easily be made by varying the size of the ocular cap gap, or OCG. I hope this video has been helpful, and my apologies if this caused any confusion amongst those who already have Puma microscopes. This video concludes the tutorial series for the Puma microscope system, as it was originally published in the Journal of Microscopy in 2021. Future videos will concentrate on applications experiments, updates, usage tips, and details of new or updated modules. So stay tuned and keep an eye on my Twitter feed and YouTube community tab as well as the project GitHub page for the latest news, developments, and discussion. Thanks for watching.